On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a one. A blessed and wonderful Tuesday evening to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now my peeps, I have a few stories to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in a Jamaica. So watch this now my peeps, we're going to kick it off over there in the parish of St. Elizabeth where Officer Yeman Pick and Team was deployed in that particular police division to find a criminal elements and bring him to justice. That particular criminal element, that old dirty corner boy, is presently on your screen. He has since been identified as Christopher McCain. He's said to be 27 years of age and from the Top Hill community of Junction, St. Elizabeth. Now this criminal element here have a rap sheet long. So, yeah man, you name it, this criminal element has carried out that atrocity. He was charged for a knockings and clappings that resulted in the loss of life of a man and a string of robberies committed right across the length and breadth of St. Elizabeth. His mode of transportation is usually a motorcycle. So on Saturday, Officer Yeman Pick and Team got information that two men were aboard a motorcycle and was planning on committing a robbery of a returning resident. Well, luckily for that returning resident, Officer Yeman Pick and Team intercepted two men traveling on a bike along the Top Hill main road which led to a brazen knockings and clappings between both criminal elements and the police. It is said that when Christopher McCain and Officer Yeman Pick Yai McFour dirt settings was the order of the day. Officer Yeman Pick took evasive action to protect himself and that of his colleagues and fired several rounds in the direction of Christopher McCain who was firing at them along with his accomplice. Now the accomplice escaped in nearby what? To answer that, yeah man. But Christopher McCain was not so lucky. He was however taken to the hospital where he was pronounced, you know what. A point three eight zero Smith & Wesson pistol along with two point three eight zero cartridges were retrieved from the scene of that brazen and deadly gun battle between Christopher McCain and his accomplice and Officer Yeman Pick and Team. And of course, Officer Yeman Pick and Team came out as the victors and still in the St. Elizabeth Police Division. One of the eight escapees from the Black River Police lockup in June has been found lifeless. Now on the spot news media was informed that the body believed to be that of Alric Hutchinson was found in an abandoned quarry yesterday in Ginger Hill, St. Elizabeth. This photograph presently on your screen is a photograph of Alaric Hutchinson. Now the body was in an advanced state of decomposition. Deputy Superintendent Coleridge Minto, head of St. Elizabeth Police Division, said it appears that the escapees have been using a nearby unfurnished building as a base. So we're going to hear from the superintendent as he weighs in on this matter. Listen. We have seen evidence that persons were here. We have seen things such as uh, cell phones that were burnt, spoons, liquor bottles. And important to note is that a body was also located in the nearby bushes. And therefore we have 
contacted or forensic scenes of crime for it to be fully processed. The investigations will continue. We will continue the search for the remainders and we continue to make an appeal for them to surrender to the police and to turn themselves in with their attorneys. That was the voice of Deputy Superintendent of Police in charge of the St. Elizabeth Police Division, Coleridge Minto. And still in the parish of St. Elizabeth, another of the eight inmates who escaped during the jailbreak on June 19th at the Black River Police Station lockup was captured by the St. Elizabeth Police at a bar in Buena Vista near Marysville on Saturday. Now, this criminal element here is presently on your screen. He has since been identified as Richard Brown, a resident of Middle Quarters in St. Elizabeth. Brown was charged with robbery with aggravation. The police source stated that Brown was at a bar sometime after 5 p.m. when he was apprehended by them. The jailbreak which caused widespread debate resulted in a shake-up of the leadership of the St. Elizabeth Police Division. This criminal element here was caught in the bar drinking a special. And for those who don't know what is a special, a special is a shot at the good old Rhea Nevio white rum with some boom as the chaser. <laughs> yeah, man. So among the other escapees who remain at large is a criminal element known as Anward Hines, otherwise known as Kirky. This criminal element here is charged for a quadruple knockings and clappings that has resulted in the last life of four, four farmers to be exact. A farmer known as Archibald Brown, age 60, his brother George Brown, age 57, a next man known as Maurice Sanderson, age 40, and Ezra Wright, age 73. All of this took place in a remote community called Claremont in St. Elizabeth. It took place on May 27 of 2015. At the time, the police had said he's believed to be the leader of a gang, which was a remnant of the infamous Stonecrusher gang. So in July 2015, he was found hiding in a ceiling of a house in Hatfield in Manchester and was apprehended by the police. The other detainees who escaped are Oral Cole, age 31, said to be from the Comfort Hall district in Manchester. The next man known as Alaric Hutchinson, who was found decomposed age 38 from Brighton District in St. Elizabeth. A next man known as Dean Simpson, age 34 from Turnatop in St. Elizabeth, who were all in custody and charged for robbery with aggravation. A next man known as Javan Sims, age 25 from Copperwood in St. James. A man known as Kenneth Stewart, from Beacon Hill in St. Catherine. They were both being held for the offence of knockings and clappings that has resulted in the last life of two. The next man known as Demar Williams. I spoke about that criminal element recently and I will have to revisit his story and give you a more comprehensive story on this particular criminal. He's from the Gravel Heights community of Spanish Town, St. Catherine. He is facing a knockings and clappings with intent and also a knockings and clappings that resulted in the last life of a man. Yeah, man. Now, over there in the St. James Police Division, this man presently on your screen, who has since been identified as 73 year old Donald Smith said to be the head of transportation for the Sandals group. 
he was reportedly knifed up in his upper body several times at his apartment in Freeport, Montego Bay, St. James last evening. So reports from the police suggest that sometime after 8 o'clock, Mr. Smith arrived home from work when he was attacked by a man who reportedly broke into his apartment. The suspect used a knife to inflict several wounds all over his upper body. The wounded man alerted a relative who called the police and an ambulance. He was however transported to the hospital for treatment. Detectives from the Montego Bay Criminal Investigation Branch are presently reviewing CCTV footage as a part of their investigation into that brutal matter. So last but most definitely not the least, presently on your screen, a man said to be known as Dwayne, a.k.a. Six Bass, was taken out in a hail of bullets along Shortwood Road whilst travelling in his motor car. Now, information surrounding his loss of life is not yet clear, but word on the street is that it's a reprisal knockings and clappings for the man known as Thug Fashion. It is said that this man was a close friend of the policeman in that alleged whole saga of the woman and all these sort of things. So it's a total mix-up with these set of killings. So on the spot news media will most definitely have to unravel the whole web of things and make you better understand. So anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in a subsequent newscast. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man.